Yeah, man. Good stuff. Well, um, yeah, I guess just just kind of kick off where where we picked up last time. So, um, yeah. obviously, the interview is really timely with the release of, of the yesterday video. And yeah, so, yeah. kind of keen to just really jump in straight away there. And I know we kind of touched upon these points previously, but but really keen to pick up and just kind of understand from your perspective what what the inspiration was behind the video. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, really shed some light on your on your thoughts. Yeah. So, like, uh, yeah, well, like I said uh, earlier, the, the inspiration behind it was obviously the false prophets, mm-hmm. the joke of false prophet video, and uh, yeah, because just seeing it, just the aesthetic of it all, especially with the vibe of uh, for the, obviously for the uh, yesterday's track, the vibe of it was perfect. It's just it's chilled out where, but it's still like I said earlier, it's still vo- uh, focused on me. Same mm-hmm. time because, as well as the beat is carrying it, Guami did kill it on the production. But at the end of the day, it's because I'm rapping really fast, so I'm kind of you know taking over if anything. You know what I mean? But yeah, so I feel like the vibe of the so that was like the perfect the perfect way to obviously to how can I say to vocalize the song to get the song out like to to show pe- to show people what the vibe of the song is. You know, see that second bit. I was I was only told about that second bit of the video. Like I think like mm. a week before release, and I saw that and I was like, "Woo!" Like that is sick. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, I, I think from everyone's perspective that that's watched the video, and I know that it's, it's slowly creeping up. As as we said before, that ultimately it's a great yeah. spectacle, and I think that 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 reference of the J Cole False Prophets video is is clear to be seen. I think with the yeah. Almost the breakdown and the saturation of the colours, giving it that slightly yeah. old school, that slightly old school vibe. It comes across really well and it's, it's powerful. Um, yeah, well, yeah. I'm sure if that was what yeah. you were going for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. We're just trying to go for something which is, it's kind of, it's not like it, it is a simple video, but something that's just not been done in terms of the whole, like, even me on top of the car, or like mm. obviously all my backgrounds moving, stuff like that. It's like simple, but no, not many people really do that kind of stuff. No, hundred percent. Where where was it filmed? Uh, we just went. Uh, we even came to your ends, bro. We came to. We went around like uh, towards like the Barnum area, and then we went to like. We just we just went like we came to like Little Hampton. We drove from Brighton, mm. and then we just came down here, shoot, uh, shot a couple, shot a couple of shots just around, just around like the Little Hampton, Little Hampton, going to Little Hampton Park. We're just recording a few shots there. Was... Um, yeah, so another thing that, that I was keen to understand, I was doing a bit of background research and I was seeing that, that originally, obviously, the video was supposed to drop a little while ago and then it got, got delayed a little bit. So I was keen yeah. to understand why that happened, if that was affected by the mighty COVID-19 or, or really what the reason <laughs> was behind, uh, behind the delay. Yeah, well, there was two reasons. So one of them being, uh, so basically, because Colt Deep Record, because that's obviously where the video was released on, they already had something that they released, I think, like about two days earlier. So they were like, okay, it would just be Pete just releasing stuff like on the go. So they're like, all right, cool. If we can release it, maybe just delay it three days more so you can give it a bit more time. And also, so you know that sample that was it yesterday? You notice it's not in the final video. Mm-hmm. Because copyright, we got slapped by YouTube. They were like, yo, <laughs> either pay us money or cut that bit out of your video. So we obviously have to cut that bit out. How so, much were they asking for? Well, we're going to have to... Well, basically, they give you three strikes. So that was our second... So that was Colt Deep's second strike. So if they got a third, then they would have had to pay like two bucks. Well, depending how much how much they ask for the sample, so... Sure, sure. Crazy stuff. The politicals and music right now. Oh, bro. 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 There's, pol- there's politics and everything, bro. Yeah, that's it. That's it, isn't it? Um, so, I mean, really just keen to, to kind of take it from there and and really, I guess, understand from your perspective. I know we talked about J. Cole there, the inspiration behind the video, but I know there's yeah. the, the five artists that you kindly sent over, which are bigger inspirations in your career. So, um, yeah. again, correct me if I'm wrong, but to touch on those five artists, so your top five artists, Lil Wayne, yep. Biggie Smalls, Lil yep. Sims, Kendrick Lamar and Future. Yep. Uh, yep. There was the toss-up between Future and Offset, Future but we yeah. Future. So, um, 
yeah, again, just just uh, be great for you to to shed some light on those five artists, why they're there, and again, yeah, yeah. I think it's really really key to get across that essentially you're not saying that those are the, the five most talented artists in the world. They're yeah, the ones yeah, yeah. that affected you the, the most. Ones that inspired, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like, uh, so with Lil Wayne, it's just because it was when I moved to Zimbabwe. Because obviously I'm born here, I was born here in the UK, I was born in London, then I moved to Zimbabwe when I was like twelve. And being out there, all they listen to out there is American music, hip hop, and stuff like that. So obviously, I was exposed to a lot of Lil Wayne, Jay Z, Kanye, and all that. Kind of. Obviously, I would listen to them here, but over there, it's more like mm-hmm. that's just their music. Like where here is, you we're listening to grunge, uh, garage, and you know all that kind of stuff, jungle. Where over there, it's just pure hip hop, just hip hop. So I listen to a lot of Lil Wayne, and I just, his punchlines would just fucking blow me out of the water. Bro. Every time I'd hear him just say something. Jesus, like, like Lil Wayne. Obviously, he's been a massive inspiration just for me, just in terms of also being versatile. Because Lil Wayne, you'd find him on so many different kinds of songs. Where you'd find him on a song with Shakira, and then he's doing a song with Rick Ross, then he's doing a song with Drake, then he's doing a song with Linkin Park, then he's doing a song with Kevin Rudolph, and then he's doing a song with Jay Shaw, then he's doing a song back with, you know what I mean? Like, just mm-hmm. that versatility, where which really inspired me, just to say like. I don't want to be a one lane artist. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In terms of, because I've noticed as well, even like I've done this before, where I listened to my own Spotify and I was a bit like, like the yes, like 1997 compared to my element, two completely different vibes. Two, one's bass heavy, the other one's lyric heavy. So. 100%. Wh- which do you prefer actually out of interest? Ooh, 1997. 1997, bro. Like 100%. Like my element is sick. Like, don't get me wrong, like, GBRF went crazy on production. But I just feel like me as an artist, I feel like my limit was just, like, sort of getting myself out there, getting myself, like, showing people, okay, look, I can do this. I can, I can, I can get a project together myself. And 1997 was sort of like a little step up in terms of just where I'm not just writing trap beats just because everyone's doing trap beats. I'm actually writing on different kind of beats that I think I would suit. And then, okay, so then we go to Biggie, like I said before, I don't need to explain, but listen to Ready to Die, that explain. Uh, and then Lil Sims, she's just, just, a, just her style. She's got this whole like, it's, it's like American hip hop with the British jungle grime thing. And it's just mashed into one. And mm-hmm. just in terms of like, she's got that Lil Wayne element where, she can rap on a jazz beat and a trap beat and a grind beat and a hip hop beat. Like, you know, she can even rap on a drum and bass beat if she gave it to her. Like, she, she's one of the artists which really inspired me. But just like, she has never, I, I've never heard, personally, I've never heard a trash Lil Sim song. I've never heard, like, I've heard some ones which are below par, but I've never heard a trash Lil Sim yeah, I think the thing about Lil Sims, you, you can't really say any of her songs are trash. I think I think people can have opinions and say, oh, I don't like this song, but you can't brand yeah. it as a trash song. But it's not trash, yeah. I think the the kind of thought process behind different people liking different ones of her songs is because she's so versatile, so she's always going to appeal to different people. And yeah, yeah, exactly. if you look at various, various projects by her, they're all very, very different. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And they're all well thought behind. Well thought. Very well thought. From each track, track one to whether it's 10, 15, every song has been well thought. It's been put together in a certain way for mm-hmm. a I guess that, that kind of brings us on to Kendrick Lamar, who definitely fits within oh, that same he's ballpark. The, he's, he, he, is, he is the goat of that. <laughs> when it comes to making a project and turning it into a whole story, bro, good kid, Matt City, man. Good kid, Matt C, but need I say more? Listen to that whole thing start to finish. I'm telling you, you're gonna you're gonna feel like you know Kendrick personally, bro. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're gonna feel like he's your brethren. You're gonna be like, Yeah, Kendrick's my cousin. Yeah, yeah I know him, bro. Like, like, yeah, bro. Like <laughs> I think, I think from, from my perspective and in my opinion, if there's ever an album that you cannot shuffle, it is Good Kid, Mad City. You, you, you cannot shuffle, go into yeah. that album and shuffle it. You have to play that all the way through. From yeah, start just to the finish. way, just the way each song bleeds into each other, bro. It's actually just poetic, bro. It's so it's so, like honestly, that's why Kendrick. Like, I I think of this gen- of this generation, he is the best ever. Like of this generation, in terms of from the 2010, like don't 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 mess with Kendrick, bro. Don't don't like just people should just bro. You see Drake tried to send for him. 
Kendrick sent back. And Drake still ain't said nothing ever since. He even tried to say, yeah, Kendrick was the best, man. Like, he's like, nah, bro. Kendrick was like, shut up, bro. You dumb, bro. Like, well, like, don't How do you rank Kendrick them? Because I think a lot of people would say, if we're talking about this generation, they'd, they'd probably say J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, and, and probably Drake. A lot of people would yeah, say yeah. Oh, bro, three. bro, I'm not going to lie, yeah? So I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not like a Drake fan. I, there are a few of his songs you can't deny Drake has hits. Can't even deny that. I don't care who you are. You might be. You might say you hate Drake with all your soul, but there's gonna be at least two tracks that you fuck with heavy. There's gonna be at least two. You might even be there like, whatever. How would you rank those three then in order? In order. Okay, but then okay. What what are we saying here in terms of just who's your the opinion? Best? So okay. So in terms of who's the best or It'll impact or... Your opinion. Okay, so overall, overall, mm. right? Okay, my opinion. I'm not, I'm not saying my favourite, but I'm saying my opinion and I'll explain why. So I'm going to say of this generation, not the best, but the most influential and biggest and impactful string. I, like I don't care. Like, dude, look how look at the numbers this guy's done. Mm. Just look at that stuff. I'm, like I said, I'm not a big Drake fan. But you have to acknowledge greatness when you see greatness. Bro. Mm-hmm. This guy has an airplane called Air Drake. Bruv, what? <laughs> but like, bro, like, so just look at the numbers he's done. He's broken. He's breaking his own records. Just look at the, bro. He spent over like 500 weeks or something stupid like that in the top 10. Are you mad? On, on the Billboard charts? I'm mad. 500 weeks that's crazy bro that's over like 10 years bro that's crazy and then like also even like the people who are doing this whole singy singy like trappy kind of thing I'm not saying Drake started it but he made it popular mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he brought it he brought it to pop culture and now everyone started to do that kind of thing that whole singy kind of rappy thing you know what I'm saying mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. obviously I don't, I don't get me wrong I, I was called Kid Cudi it, they are some of the curators of that. They're the ones who really did that. And Drake just pushed it to a whole mm-hmm. other level. Mm-hmm. If it weren't for Drake, people like Russ wouldn't be born. Agreed. Deep agreed. Deep I think I think the thing about Drake as well, in my opinion, that he's mastered and what makes him one of the best in the industry is his business acumen. Is it's not just about he's a great musician. Yeah. It's about how does he get his music out there? I mean, if you look at something like Two C Slide, yeah. which I think we both agree we're not massive Rash. fans of that song. Trash trap. Hate that song. He has made that song because he knows it's going to be a TikTok phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. Most yeah, exactly. people are going to do his own marketing and then all of a yeah. sudden he's got a hit just like that without spending anything on marketing. It's, 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 it's so, bro. so good. Bro, and the fact that just the name Drake alone, bro, just the name Drake alone. You know, this guy Drake, yeah, I'm not even joking. He can release a track of him for a 20 seconds. Just going, <sighs> I'm telling you, it will chart top ten. Mm. It will, it might not go number one, but it will definitely chart top ten. Just because people want to hear what Drake's got to say, I don't even care. Drake can talk about how he's wiping his nose with a tissue, and bare people just yam it. They will yam it. They will eat it up, bro. Whereas, whereas, obviously, and then. That's why, that's why I think Drake is obviously number one. Number two, definitely Kendrick because he still had that, that pop culture yeah. influence but then he still kept it like very lyrical and he still kept it true to himself where he hasn't... Don't get me wrong, Kendrick has said like we've, we've all heard the track where he's gone, all right, look, you know what, you guys want a radio record, let me just drop your radio record real mm-hmm. quick. Then mm-hmm. let, me, let, me, then let me go back to my... To my like my conscious shit right here, bro. Because, bro, like tracks like DNA, like he's still spitting on it, bro. He's still spraying. Like, all right, that's a that's a political song, but that charted, bro. Like stuff like that. So Kendrick, where he still kept it conscious, but he's he he didn't try to go into into obviously pop uh, into, uh, into like the pop mainstream world. It just happened, but just because of how good he is. And then J Cole, same thing as well. Where just because of how good he is, that's how he ended up. So obviously, like mainstream. I'll call, but I'll say Kendrick and Drake are mainstream. J Cole is mainstream. Just because listen to his project, bro. Like besides obviously uh, KOD, 
which is the one where he did have a couple bangers on there, a couple tracking there, like like obviously ATM and uh, Fergram or something like that. And then, but then he's been more very on the conscious side. But for your eyes only, he was not trying to go on radio. He was not true. I swear, he probably even said in the studio, I don't want this played on the radio. But mm-hmm. then, I believe mean, my neighbors think I'm selling dope. Oh, bro, he you don't even, even try it, bro. But that's how good he is. Just because of, just be, like, even even he's good with these well thought out projects. Obviously, not as good as a Kendrick, but he is still real good with it, bro. Because I was listening to, uh, I was listening to For Your Eyes Only like a couple of days ago, actually. Mm-hmm. Just the track For Your Eyes Only. Yeah, it's incredible, yeah. Bro, just start to finish, bro. Just it's crazy. Like he's like J. Cole is that he's top three, but yeah, Drake and Kendrick just just pip it over him. Just just that just that lip, just that little bit in terms of impact. But in terms of the best, Kendrick, J. Cole, Drake. Yeah, hundred percent agree, actually. Yeah. In terms yeah. of the best, we, we we all we all know the order. Yeah, definitely. I I I think it's important though to explain that influence, like you say, because People like Drake, who might not be as talented, that they still had a massive, if not bigger, influence, and yeah, yeah, maybe even bigger artists around the world. So I think it's important to look at actually talent ball. So that that impacts, like you say, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's a great explanation. Um, I mean, for for people that that don't know you, Taff, and don't know your music, yeah, if you had to explain yourself musically in five words, what five words would you use? Oh, 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 <laughs> um, lyrical, mellow, oh, you put me on the spot, bro. <laughs> I've never, t- I've never thought it. So, okay, lyrical, mellow, vibey, yeah, vibey, okay. Uh, I think my music's so so different. Like I've got so many we, different yeah, we talked about it. versatile a lot, so I think versatile would be a good one. Versatile, word. yeah, definitely, definitely versatile. And I wouldn't say I'm a bar heavy rapper though, because to me, I'm a rapper who has a couple filler bars. Mm-hmm. I would admit I have a couple of filler bars. I wouldn't say bar heavy. I would say not being big headed, but I got crazy flow. So oh, I agree. flow. So, I don't know flow, flowy. Yeah, I think flow is, <laughs> flow is good. We'll go with that. I think. Yeah, yeah. You raise a really interesting point though about not being bar heavy, and I know different artists personally, and I know some who are massively bar heavy and they make incredible music, but for the mass it's really yeah. hard for them to understand those sorts of lines. So yeah, yeah. people that listen to a lot of music will probably appreciate it more than something that's not bar heavy at the same yeah. time. The mass, which is where you want to get to get big, will not understand that sort of music. So Yeah, they, they want the simple stuff, easy to digest and stuff. Yeah, Exactly. So I think it's, it's about finding that balance in the middle. So someone that doesn't listen to music can still grasp the concept of it. But at the same time, people that do listen Kendrick. to music, they still get those. Kendrick, exactly. Kendrick, Kendrick, bro. That's that. That's that bracket Kendrick for into. But yeah, when I say when I say I'm the bar heavy in terms of just like, don't get me wrong, I will chuck a punchline in there, like mm-hmm. here and there, like you know, just chuck a little sly one, just like, just like <laughs> slide it in there. But like, yeah, but like, yeah, just bar. Like when I say bar heavy, I mean rappers like. Like, uh, like a Lil Wayne mm. or like a uh, Montana 3000. Mm-hmm. Like, their rappers, even Ab Soul, mm-hmm. Krypton Conan. Krypton Conan is a classic example. Everything, there's everything they say is making you go, oh, 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 oh. You don't know what you even have to pause the track and wheel it up. Yeah, just, I think, <laughs> just I think if, you look at, if you look at Krypton Conan's Far in the Booth, it's. I'm going to get this wrong now, but I think it's eight, nine years old now. Um, and still to this day, every now and again, I go back and I listen to it. And it's either because I've forgotten it or I listen to something. I'm like, wait, actually, I, I didn't understand that before. Like, yeah, what yeah, is going yeah. on? Bro, that's what I mean. Like, bar heavy rappers where, like you said, it can take years. It can take years to understand the punchline. 
because sometimes that's what I mean with that whole Lil Wayne thing where like nine years later I'm like oh that's what he meant like bro because obviously when you're younger as well when you're younger as well you're you're absorbing that you're, you're absorbing that music I can even say for the kids today when they hear that bar heavy stuff they're sort of like oh yeah okay cool yeah 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 mm-hmm. then they grow up like us and then we go bear yeah that's bear, it bear. Yeah, that's what he meant. The more you learn, the more you understand. At the end of the day, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. But then, obviously, for some people, they don't. They just don't. They do not want to hear bars. No, like, bro. Like, bro. I, but I know some people who would rather hear someone talk about making a sandwich with the coldest melody. <laughs> they just want to hear that cold melody, bro. Like, I was making lettuce, yeah, and you know them getting yeah. Like, bro. That's what. That's all they want to hear. Bro. I think you should you should make a song about making a sandwich, bro. I was deep in it, you know. Like, I might just you know, rappers talk about baguettes. What, what are you gonna have in your sandwich, bro? Bro, my what well, about perfect sandwich? Bro. I'm gonna have some definitely some bacon in there. Okay, chicken, bit of lettuce, cucumber, sweet and sour. Ooh, sweet and sour. No, not sweet and sour. Sweet chili sauce. Nice, nice. Bit of sweet chili sauce, just a just a drizzle of mayo, mm. and then. Just for effect, just slap a bit of ham on there, bro. Nice. Butter the bread. Butter that. Toast it a little bit. Toast the bread for a little bit. So it's like just a bit like light brown. Slap it on there. Triangle cut. Try it. It's got to be. It's got to be triangle. Got to be the triangle cut, bro. Like, bro, you can't be having the rectangles. What? Rectangle sandwich, bro. <laughs> uh, can you make a song about that? Oh, yeah. Let's go. Oh, bro. Bro, all right. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah. When I was making the sang, uh, when you know I was getting hungry. Uh, uh, what I'ma eat is just for lunch. Man, I'm just hungry. Uh, yeah. Man, I just put the bread to lettuce, added some sauce. Yeah, yeah. What I'ma do? I'ma drink in my juice. Then I get lost. Man, I get lost in the sang. Uh, man, I be making that bread. Uh, uh, all of my God, all of the bacon went to my head. Damn. What do I do? What do I do? I'ma just put in some red. When I say red, I'm in the kitchen. You know that this meal is getting dead. Uh. Yeah, call me <laughs> off the top of the dome. Off the dome, bro. Just like that. Just like that. I'm real. I'm real. Yeah. Okay. So the other. No, wait. So, so wait. We'll say the other artists in it. So we said. So we touched on Lil Wayne, Biggie, Kendrick. Lil Sims, so the only remaining future. one is is Future. This is the Cody crazy, bro. I think it's amazing, bro. Cody crazy, yeah. Just and his what the thing about Future is, I think what really got me hooked onto him, I think because it was around about the time when uh, was so we used to link up there as well. So sort of like 2015, 16. That was like you remember them days, bro. We used to just be bagging out Future. Or that was peak Future, bro. Like, like it's just the work. Like he brought, he brought out like how many projects in two years. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's ridiculous, and I think he he either did at the time, or he does still hold the record for the most amount of tapes to be in the the top one hundred at any one time within one year. Something crazy. Yeah. Um, I can't remember how many it was, but I think I think the, the almost unfortunate thing about Future is that he kind of gets a bad name for the tracks that do sit in the chart. So I remember when you first introduced me to Future and I was like, nah, like I've, I've heard Low Life, I don't like Low Life, I don't like these yeah, yeah, yeah. Art songs. But then actually you go onto DS2 and you start to listen to... You start to deep uh, hit, Strippers bro. and things like that and you're just like, wow, okay, this is... This, so this, guy is actually, this guy is actually sick, bro. Yeah, I, yeah, I feel like that as well. Like the song that chart for Future... It's not like, because bro, like, if you listen to, I feel like his best stuff with mixtape stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Beast Mode, um, Monster, 56 Nights, um, Purple Rain, Purple Rain uh, what, 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 what are the mixtapes for there that, you know, that came out all the time? But even Dirty Sprite 1, bro, I, I'm not a big fan of it, but when, when you become a future fan, I saw I was listening to it, and I was like, I can see, I can see, I can see where this whole like foundation mm-hmm. is coming from future, bro. Like, and then, um, but yeah, I feel like his best stuff is his mixtape stuff, and that's the stuff that never charts. Agreed. Because obviously, obviously it's, it's mixtape stuff, bro. He's only he's only just released like Purple Rain on a uh, on all on all streaming platforms. Mm-hmm. He's only like Beast with all them kind of. I'm telling you, if they came out 
if they were if they were able to like obviously get on the billboards, they they would have been absolute hits, bro. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. absolute hits, bro. But Future yeah. knows what he's doing because he knows he can make a radio hit like off the dome. Bro. Yeah, hundred percent. You just to go, all right, cool. Yeah. What do you want? Mask off. Calm. Say no more. Let me just it. drop that real quick for you. Give his best mate a call as well, who we've already touched upon, which which can't hurt either. Oh yeah, <laughs> trust. <laughs> So, I mean, just before we go into, so I've got the discovery challenge uh, ready for you. So we've got 10 quiz questions, two on each of the artists that you've given me. So just before we jump into the discovery challenge, I think it'd be interesting for people, again, that don't know you, you've kind of touched upon, these are the five words that I would use to describe me. These are my influences. These are my top five artists. But yeah. You touched upon going to Zimbabwe. It'd be interesting to hear like your journey and, and how you fell into making music. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I was born in... No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was... Because um, I did realise, I think it was like the whole music thing, like when I realised, there was like... Not what I realised, but now I know when I think back at it, around like when I was like seven. Mm-hmm. So me and my cousin, there was this tune we did. Like my uncle, he's still done music now. He's even got like a whole like label in Zimbabwe. He's actually doing really well. Bro. Got like TV shows being broadcasted in Africa. Like, it's crazy. But like, so I remember me and my cousin, I was like seven, she was five. We went to a studio. The CD is somewhere. It's either in London or I don't know where it is, but if I find it again, I need to find it, bro. So it's like I was seven years old and uh, <laughs> just this beat in the background. And me and my cousin are talking about Sound like fighting monsters. I'm freestyling this whole tune. And bro, the tune's like four minutes. And she does a chorus for like 20 seconds. And I'm rapping the whole time. I'm not obviously dumb. Some of the rhymes are whack, bro. I'm seven years old. But I'm freestyling this whole thing. And I was listening back to it. Like when I last heard it, I was like, this is like a seven year old, bro. Like, this is not bad. And then, then I moved to Zimbabwe. And then obviously listening to a lot of hip hop and like some rap and Lil Wayne. Listening to Lil Wayne made me want to like do punchline because I already knew I kind of had rhythm in my head. I kind of knew how to structure words and stuff. So that's where you like you do your homework, you study and stuff like that. Half the time I do my homework, the other half I'm writing raps. Now, because so, now, now I've been putting two and two together, like I've actually always been like into writing music. So like I would always be writing raps, just trying to write stuff, write stuff. I even wrote a song. Uh, which like loads of people in my year and like the year above were all like they were like oh yeah that's kind of sick that's kind of sick I'd be like okay this music thing like, so it's all right but I'm into football like football is all my, always my thing and then I came back here when I was sixteen and then I recorded a track for jokes no you know obviously no lock off I did lock off remix I did that for jokes and it got like six thousand plays on SoundCloud and I was like, What? Like people were like, Yo, that's sick, that's it. People were like, yo, 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 bro, I rate that remix. I was thinking, What? Like people don't really like that. So but I still was into my football. I was still like, nah, nah, I don't want to like don't want to be doing this, man. Like, I don't want to be doing this whole thing. And then I got asked to do a gig because uh, my boy Lacey, because he obviously he he heard because I think I did nah, what was it? Nah, nah hippie was after. No, no, yeah, it was, it was. I recorded, I recorded Hippie with uh, Sammy and you guys. That was like 2016, late 2016. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then obviously the sound, the song was on SoundCloud. And then Lacey heard the track. And he was like, "Yo, do you wanna come perform in Brighton?" I was like, oh, I'm, uh, "Nah, I don't wanna perform. Man. Like, performance on my thing." Man said twenty quid. I was like, "I'm there." I was like, "I'm <laughs> there, bro. I'm there, bro." So I went. Obviously, I performed. Did my thing, and then that because I was twenty seventeen, and then that was where I realized because the reaction from the crowd, seeing people enjoy the song, that's when I went. I had this music tickets for me. I was like, I want to do this. I was like, I don't know. It's just that feeling of being on stage, seeing people like vibe with your tracks, like all the focus is on you. It, like obviously, I'm not gonna lie. Being an artist, it's so egotistical, bro. Like <laughs> you fired off ego so hard because you're just like. You want people to like your stuff. You mm-hmm. want people to see you shine. You want to be in that spotlight. That's why we do the music. Mm-hmm. Obviously, unless you're a producer or a cameraman or something, you like to be behind it. But when you're an artist, when you're a singer or a rapper, a vocalist of some sort, you want to be in the spotlight. So that's what I kind of realized. I was like, yeah, I, like, I like this. Like, I want to I wanna do this. I want to make music for people. People like the music I make. I want to keep doing that. So like, I feel like, yeah, so obviously from there, 
Then I start taking it more seriously. And then when I started recording the EP, uh, my Element EP, that's when I went, okay, this is it. Like, this is like, I'm doing this now. Like, I'm fully, that's when I left. That's when I fully left football. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm going to just do music now. And now I'm here. That's it, man. It's, it's, yeah, no, thank you for that. Even uh, even with my knowledge of your journey, there's still certain bits that, that I didn't know, so really interesting to, to understand. And um, yeah. just before we go into the quiz, just really quickly, actually, so I was speaking to Seaslin, actually, the other day, um, doing an interview yeah. with him, and one of the interesting things that we discussed was actually he had a five-year break between the release yeah, yeah, of did. Snakes and Ladders EP to the release of Obstacles. So I was keen to understand from him what, what happened in those five years and ultimately why is it that you, that you took that long of a break? Um, yeah. You haven't had that break, but I'm interested to understand because everyone has struggles throughout their career, whether that's music, whether that's work, whether that's football, and yeah. at some points people do feel like just giving up. So what I'm trying to get out of different people that, that I speak to is really how close have you been to, to giving up and really what was it that made you continue and actually take you to the yeah. place that you are today? Oh yeah, don't get me wrong, bro. Because like, I'm still quite new at this. I have, even, I have as well, I have a thought of a point going, no, no, you know what, like, long this, bro, like, this is long, like, can't be bothered. Because the thing about music is it's about building, especially in the day and age you are in now, bro, like, if you don't have a certain amount of followers on your page, people won't take you as seriously. So, like, for example, like, if my page was to go against someone who has, like, 3,000, 4,000 followers, people would tend to take their music a lot more seriously just because I have less. I could be, I could be a crazy, like, I could, my music could be more superior to theirs, but then just because of their image and that, like, now, so mm -hmm. just because of stuff like that, like, I'm yeah, still trying to find my image yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I, I'm still trying to find my image, still trying to find my sound, and just stuff like that. And I feel like it's not happening. Well, there's been times where I feel like it's not happening. I was like, you know, I don't want to do this. Like, this is long. Like, I've just been considering it. And music is a building process, bro. It's years of building. It's years of creating, years of finding your sound, years of molding who you are, years of your storytelling. That's what, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I'm still very new into this. But I did release two projects in six months, which is... Mm -hmm. I'm, I was on my future shit, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, but like, you know I mean? like, I did feel like quitting at points. Like, even like, bro, during this lockdown, because I can't really record the way I want to record. I can't record videos. I can't really do any of that. And it's just made me go, like, what's the point, man? Like, like, well, going back into this, we can't perform until obviously, it, like, venues are open and stuff like that. And it just kind of brings me down. But then again, I always say to myself, why I like I'm, I didn't quit music I didn't quit football to do like to quit music like and I really enjoy music because at the end of the day what I've noticed is every musician every musician ever every time they say oh I quit I quit now I quit they could even like like season as well like they could quit for five years some people can quit for ten years but you know what the thing is they always come back because mm -hmm. music is something that's in you if you can rap or sing or produce or play an instrument that's what you enjoy doing. You're always, I don't care. You can even go 50 years not doing it, but you're going to always go back. Bro. Always going to end up going back. Because music is something. Once it's in you, it's in you, bro. But yeah, so there's, yeah, so there's been points where I wanted to just like leave it. And then I've got, what makes me more happier than making a new track, bro? Like, honestly. That's it. No, 100%. No, thank you for that. It's, it's interesting to understand. I think, like like I said, and like Seasoning touched upon, like you just touched upon, everyone has those moments, but it's just important to, I guess what a lot of people say, and, and I kind of agree with, is, is go back to that moment that you that you first decided that this was what you want to pursue and, and why was yeah. the reason that you that you chose that pathway in the first place. And yeah, exactly. if you if you almost imagine that point in your head and also think of all the times that it's made you incredibly happy that that, that sense of power should really spare you on to, to continue the journey that you're meant to be on so yeah 100% agree with that well um without further ado we'll um mm. we'll jump into the discovery challenge so we got the uh, the 10 questions first uh, are you ready i am so ready i'm really interested to see how you do on this okay <laughs> so Start off in order of the artists that you've gone down. So two questions each artist. So uh, how old 
was Lil Wayne when he was signed to Cash Money Records? When he was signed? When he was signed. He was like 12? Oh, uh, 13? <laughs> 11? He was 11. He was 11. Oh, uh, I, knew, I knew it was one of them ages. I knew it was like 11, 12, somewhere there. That's a... Uh... <laughs> that's a... That's a bit. <laughs> right, okay. So, true or false, Biggie is actually receiving oral sex at the end of the track, Respect. True. That is true. That's true. I remember that story. Congrats, congrats. Good job, good job. So, one out of two so far. What is the name of Lil Sim's record label? You've got to get Space, it. Space, Spain. Wait, what is it? Oh, my God. Space 101? <laughs> Age 101. Oh, my God! <laughs> I'm literally that close of all the... Oh, my God. Age 101. Not Space 101. I have to say, I, I'm disappointed. I really expect... I'm disappointed in myself too, bro. Like, oh, that's bad. Okay, okay. So, one out of three. You've got a bit of, bit of ground to make up here. Uh-huh. What is Kendrick Lamar's official last name? Duckworth. Correct. Straight away. Love that. Right, two out of four. Good. On the up. How old is future? Say four. Do you want to have another guess? Okay. Uh, 35? <laughs> it's going to have to be a, a nice. Uh, uh, no, how old is he? 36. 36? Day, day nah, he's a big man, bro. <laughs> close, close. Right, okay, so how old was Lil Wayne when he shot himself in the chest with his stepfather's magnum? Oh, I remember this. Fuck. 13. He was 12. Fuck's sake, man. Oh, that's so annoying, bro. I'm like, literally everything. It's like, hey, Space 101, Age 101. Future was, the, oh, my God. Okay, okay, let's do this. Oh, for fuck's sake, man. Okay, so this is, this is a really tough one. So I'll give you two years either way as a bracket. How old... Would Biggie Smalls be today if he was still alive? Uh, hold on. Thirty-six. That's a no. He I mean, be... forty-six. Sorry, forty-six. Sorry. Okay. It, yeah, you get it then. He would be forty-seven, eleven months and three weeks old. Oh, so I was close. No, so yeah, I was meant to say because I put because I know he died when he was like 24, 25 in 97, and I just went, I was born in 97, so let me just add 20, 23 years to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. killed yeah. it, killed it. Yeah, no, you've done well there. Okay, so the following line is from which Lil Sims song? All I could think about in my maths class was rhyming and figuring out my timing. Well, I can think about my maths class. It's not one on one FM, is it? I would say it'd be one of your favourite Little Sims songs. Mandarin Oranges. No. So it's God Bless Mary. God Bless Mary! And I really didn't do it. I've been noble. No, what's wrong with me? Oh, bro, I'm, I'm actually failing so bad at this. this is They're quite horrible. tough questions, to be fair. They're quite tough yeah, questions. Yeah, these are, these are good questions, though. These are good questions. So, okay, this is another good question. So, Barack Obama 
was publicly a massive fan of To Pimp a Butterfly, which song off the album right. did he claim was right. the best song of 2015? All right. Was it not all right? Oh, um, King Kunta. No. So it's how much a dollar cost. <laughs> oh, I've got how many? Two right. <laughs> You're having a shocker. Absolute shocker. Oh, I'm having such a shocker, man. Right, okay. So it's an interesting one. And to be fair, this I think is somewhat up for debate. But how Hello. many kids does Future allegedly have? And with a bonus point to, to get you up to four, how many women are they with? So he's got... Cause I saw the tweets the other day, innit? So I'm trying to like... This is allegedly as well, so... I think seven with six. I get You get the point for six women is allegedly six children with six women. Ah, uh, oh yeah, because you only had one with each. Yeah, I kept thinking there was two with one of them. You get Future, a point. For Future, that, like. Future does one and dip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good job. Yeah, good job. So, uh, Fuck. not not the best score to be fair. And I can oh, confirm that uh, let myself down, you, mate. you have lost. Seasling is still at, at the top spot. Ah, oh, mate, that was that was terrible for me, man. Nah, it's good fun though, and um, yeah, that was fun though. I'm not, I, I enjoyed that though. Good, good stuff. Well, um, yeah. So obviously, from, from me and uh, and obviously Discovery, thanks ever so much for for jumping on. Hundred, bro. Thank you for having me on. This has been actually this has been so much fun, bro. Really testing my knowledge. I'm going to have to listen to some old school Wayne now, bro.